Well, good morning and welcome to our service here on the 17th of January. We are again recognising that God is with us. Uh, we don't really need a building to worship God. It's great for evangelism, it's great for fellowship. But as we meet in our own homes, God is with us and God will bless us. And God will bless us this morning. In the very beginning of our service, Hannah Thompson is going to sing. And she's going to sing about heaven. It's that great song. I can only imagine what will heaven be like. It will be marvellous. And Hannah is going to help us to imagine what it's like.
Thank you, Hannah, uh, for that. Let's continue to praise God as we pray to him. Father, we have no imagination what heaven will be like because it is greater than we can even imagine. When you gave John the vision of, of heaven, it was a vision for him to see and to send something of heaven. He says the streets are paved with gold. In other words, the most precious thing that we have in this earth is used to, to make pavements in heaven. But the best thing about heaven is that we will see you face to face and we'll be able to worship you. We'll be able to talk to you. Lord, it will be wonderful being able to talk to you face to face. Thank you, Lord, that you continue to be with us and to bless us during these difficult days. Again, we want to pray for those who are unwell at this time. Uh, we have some of our friends in hospital, uh, maybe because of an accident or, or because of COVID, and we pray that they will recover soon and they will be back home again soon. We pray for some of our friends who are at home unwell at this time. Draw close to them and remind them that you are with them and you're with them to touch them, to heal them. We have a number of our friends at home who are mourning the loss of loved ones. They have that pit in their stomach, that real sense of loss. And we ask you, Lord, that you might come again, as you have been doing with them over these last few weeks, that you will give them comfort and peace and grace. But this morning, Lord, we continue to pray, and particularly pray for parents who are teaching their children at home. We ask you, Lord, that you will give them grace and mercy. We pray, Lord, that you will give them encouragement Remind them, Lord, that they are not taking the part of the teacher. They cannot do that, but that they're really just playing a holding role. And we just pray that you'll encourage them to do that and, and help them not to panic. Remind them, Lord, that their children, when they go back to school, will quickly catch up on all that's going on. And so we pray that you'll be with our families. Minister to them those who are working and teaching and, and looking after uh, children at this time. Lord, give them strength. Keep them well. Keep them free from COVID, we pray, and continue to bless them and be with each one of us as we are here this morning, and Lord, in spirit, that you will speak to us. That, Father, we, we might recognize that we're sitting in various homes and maybe it doesn't feel the same as church, and it certainly isn't the same as, as meeting together in this building. But what is the same is your presence. So Lord, give us a special blessing this morning, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I'd like to read from Acts chapter 16, and we'll read from verse 22. This is God's word. If you remember, Paul and Silas are, are, are preaching and speaking in Philippi. Uh, the girl who was a slave girl who was filled with an evil spirit, they, they delivered her from that spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. And this is the consequences of that. The crowd join in to attack Paul and Silas, and the magistrates ordered them to be stripped and beaten. And after they'd been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison, and the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. Upon receiving such orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. At midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the other prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken. All at once, the prison doors flew open and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up and when he saw the prison doors open, he threw his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, don't harm yourself. We're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He then brought them out and asked, Sirs, 
What must I do to be saved? They replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. Then they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all the others in his house. At that hour of the night, the jailer took them and washed their wounds. Then immediately he and all his family were baptized. The jailer brought them into his house and set a meal before them. He was filled with joy because he had come to believe in God, he and his whole family. Amen. Today, as we we think of this passage, we're thinking how Paul was in lockdown, uh, a forced lockdown at that. And yet because of that lockdown, there was a great breakthrough. And and our prayer is that during this lockdown, uh, we are all quite nervous about it. We're all told to stay at home. Uh, We're told to protect the National Health Service. And we're told, indeed, that that will save lives. And sometimes we think lockdown is a wasted time. Here was Paul and Silas and others. uh, They've come over to preach the good news of Christ. And as they preach the good news of Philippi, Lydia becomes a Christian and things are going really well. Uh, And then as they're going about preaching and, and telling people about Jesus, the slave girl is delivered from this demon and she too becomes a Christian. So things are going really well. Then all of a sudden there's a turn for the worse. And, and the owners of the slave girl, they stir up a crowd uh, and the crowd starts shouting and, 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 and annoying Paul and Silas and annoying the magistrate so much so that they think here are two Jews, people of little worth. A lot of people in the Roman Empire at that time didn't really particularly like the Jews. And so thinking there were only two Jews, they brought them and stripped them naked and beat them and put them into prison and thought, that's them sorted. That'll be them finished. No more of that preaching. No more of them disturbing the rich people, the comfortable people of Philippi. And I thought just for a moment or two this morning, we'd have a look at this prison experience. There's three things. I think there's lots of things, of course, there is. But there's three things this morning we're going to look at. We're going to look at the pain of their experience. We're going to look at the praise within the experience. And then we're going to look at the product of that experience. What came out of this lockdown, as it were? So first of all, look at the pain. It was definitely a difficult time. And most of us, most of us go through good days and bad days. But when we think about it, even our good days are not always great. Not the whole day is great. Or, or when we look to the past, people say, oh, the good old days, and they talk about this, that, and the next thing. But when you really think of the, the, the good old days weren't always good. And so even our good days have bad things about them, and even our bad days have good things about them. Life is difficult. Joseph Scrivens, the night before he got married, or he was getting married, his wife had an accident and died. He was so heartbroken that he moved to Canada, And eventually then he meets another young lady and he's going to marry her. And the night before they got married, she was in an accident and died. After that, then he hears that his mum is really quite ill and he writes to his mum. And when he writes to his mum, he pens this wee poem that later on becomes a song. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Oh, what a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. He discovered that life is difficult, but God is with him during that difficult time. And for Paul and Silas, this was a difficult day. A very difficult day. They had healed the girl uh, through the name of Jesus Christ. And now they're taken and they're beaten. It says they were badly beaten. They were probably using those cat of nine tails. And what they do is they, it's pieces of leather that they tie bits of bone to. And so when they whip them, uh, it it scores the skin. And so they're stripped naked. They're humiliated in the marketplace. They're then beaten almost to a pulp. It says they were severely beaten. Later on in 2 Corinthians, 
Paul tells us how many times he was beaten. Uh, and uh, he says he, he nearly died quite a few times through beatings. And this maybe is the first beating, uh, that certainly it's the first that's recorded of him being really badly beaten. And then they're thrown into the inner cell. In other words, they're thrown in the deep cell where there is no windows, where it's dark and dank and damp, and they're chained to the walls. They were in a difficult situation. There's no way that Paul and Silas could say, this is a nice place to be. This is a nice situation. His pain was real. And in life, we live at times when our pain is real. The pain of loss or the pain of illness or the fear of illness. Uh, the sense that this lockdown is going on longer and longer and longer. And there seems to be a new strain of this virus. And, and we're unsure what's going to happen next. And our pain is real. And life is like that. Life is full of good days and bad days. But even the good days can have pain. I remember a number of years ago in Thailand, Lorraine and I were at a, a prayer conference and it was for three days. And the day we came back, uh, we had just arrived home and we were saying, that was a great time. We were able to spend time praying with, with other missionaries and we were able to have really good fellowship with other missionaries. And we had just sat down and we were talking about the last two or three days when we heard a noise just outside the window. And when we looked outside... There was a man with a gun talking to this other man. The next minute, he shot him twice in the head. We'd gone out, and the upshot of was that we were then detained overnight in the local prison. The rule in Thailand is whoever's first in the scene uh, is usually detained as a suspect for murder. And so we spent the night in, in uh, the jail, in the police station, uh, in Gampeng Pet. The day started so well, but it didn't finish well. And that, that, that's true for all of us, isn't it? We have good days and bad days, and even, as I say, the good days, life can be difficult. And this was a painful experience for Paul and Silas. You could say he didn't deserve it, and they certainly didn't deserve it. And lots of people say, why me? Why should I have this pain? Why should I have this difficulty? Paul didn't do that. We see, actually, in Paul's case, in Silas's case, that there was praise in their prison experience. How are you able to praise God in a situation like this that seemed really quite hopeless? They were in the darkest part of the prison. They were in the deepest part of the prison. They were chained with little hope of being released. They had no friends in Philippi except for a businesswoman and a slave girl. And so it was very unlikely that someone would come and get them out of prison. And so their circumstances were dire. And yet it tells us while they're in prison, they sing praises to God. And the other prisoners in, in the other cells are hearing this. And they worship. And you think, why are they able to do that? Do they know something that we don't? And actually the answer is, is quite obvious. The answer is, during their darkest days, their focus was on God. And again, when Paul in, in 2 Corinthians is looking back in his life, it's obvious when he speaks that at each stage, the focus was always on who God is and how powerful God is and the faithfulness of God. He was always focusing on God. And when we focus on God, we can praise God in the midst of difficulties, in the midst of lockdown, in the midst of, of dark, depressing days. Because God is a great God. And God is able to do all things. And God wants to bless us. Remember last week when we were looking at Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11. God has a plan for our life. A plan for our welfare and not evil. To give us a future. And to give us hope. And so as Paul focused on those words, he was able to praise and sing. And during our difficulties, we need to do the same. Lorraine and I were at Bible College from 1980 to 1982. 
And uh, while we're at Bible College, 83, sorry, while we're at Bible College, we had lots of different speakers, and, and, and a lot of them were very, very good. But the one man I remember more than any other was a Romanian pastor who was imprisoned for, in two spells, one spell I think was three or four years, and the second spell he was in prison for 25 years. And when he was in prison for 25 years, he was in solitary confinement for 25 years, a man called Richard Von Brandt. And Richard came to our Bible college. And I can remember as he hobbled in, because he was beaten so badly, and his feet were beaten so badly that they would beat him so the skin was, was taken off the soles of his feet. And then whenever the skin was taken off the soles of his feet, they would beat him so that his bones would tear and, and be marked, permanently marked. And so he was a man that could hardly wear shoes. And so when he came into the hall, the first thing he did was he took his shoes off and he hobbled over and he sat while he spoke to us. And he was telling us something of his prison experience. And he said, you know, when I was in prison, it was a wonderful experience. The guards were very good to me, they said, because they gave me a number. And my prison number in jail was number one. And I thought that was very, very kind of them because that helped me to remember who God is. There is only one God. There is only one gospel. There is only one Savior. And he went on about how all the number ones in the Bible. And he said, wasn't that kind of them to give me that number to help me remember who God is and what God does? And then he went on to say that he would preach and he preached over 650 sermons and we preached them over and over again. And he said, I wasn't sure how many people could hear it. And so I preached just in case somebody would hear. He never saw anybody except the, the odd guard for 25 years. And then now and again, then he would, he would do most cold on the pipes. He says, I don't know why there were pipes in the cell because there was never any heating in the cell. But he would tap on the pipe, most cold, so that the other prisoners might hear something of Jesus as he sent them the message of hope in the midst of that darkness. And he did it by Morse code. And he wasn't bitter at all, but he was full of praise. And the reason for that, he was able to focus on God and not focus on his circumstances. During these times of difficulty, we need to learn to, to focus on God and not so much on our circumstances. And finally, we've got the product of, of that experience in prison. An earthquake comes, and this is part of it that, that I find a wee bit difficult, not that there was an earthquake, but what happens is the earthquake comes and they're released. Now, if I was Paul or Silas, I'd be thinking at this stage, this is God at work. And of course, it was God at work. But then I would also be thinking, that is God at work for my deliverance. And I would be wrong. Because actually it was God at work for the deliverance of the Philippian jailer. God did this so that he might believe. And Paul and Silas had enough wisdom that whenever their chains were released, that they didn't walk away or run away, but they remained there. They, they had a sense that God wanted them to stay there. And to stay there for a purpose. And that purpose was to share the God's good news with that jailer. And the jailer comes in and the jailer thinks that everybody is gone and he's going to kill himself. And Paul said, no, don't, don't, we're all here. And the first thing he says, and this is quoted so many times, what must I do to be saved? And what it means to be a Christian, Paul tells us. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And he goes on to explain what he means by that. How Jesus came to die for us because we're sinners. And how as we trust him as our Lord and our Savior, he saves us. He saves us from our sin and he saves us from the punishment of sin. That's what Jesus does. And tells us that as Paul explains it to him and his family, they become Christians and they're even baptized. And the jailer then cares for Paul and Silas. What an outcome. We would never have thought there was such an outcome. The jailer certainly didn't think it. The jailer was very happy to put them in the worst cell. He was very happy to, to lock them up and chain them up. 
He had no regard for Paul and Silas. But when God was at working in his life, he was hardly aware of it. And it probably started with Paul and Silas praising God. In other words, when we go through difficult times, the world is seeing how we cope with it. They're seeing whether we moan and complain and give off and worry the way that the world moans and complains and gives off and worries. Whether we, like the others, blame God or blame the church or blame other people or whether we focus on praising God. The world sees us when we go through painful experiences. And they're looking at us, they see how we react. And so the jailer, he sees them praising God and he's amazed at that. And then he sees they have an opportunity to escape and they don't. And he recognizes that this God that they worship, this God that they proclaim, is the true and living God. And so during this lockdown, there's so many bad things we can focus on, so many negative things we can focus on, but God calls us to focus on him. Let's pray. Lord, again, we recognize that this is a painful experience for all of us, a very difficult time, and it would be easy for us to be discouraged as we focus on what we see round about us. And what we see around about us is reality, without a shadow of a doubt. But help us in this difficult time to focus on you. Because you are also the reality. You're the God who is faithful. You're the God who is all-powerful. And you're the God who is willing to work in our lives for the sake of your gospel. Lead us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Suzanne Howe sent me this version of Amazing Grace, and I thought we'd play it this morning. Let's be blessed.
心别迷。So much has changed in our world lately. 疫情中这么多人失去生命，显明了生命的脆弱与短暂。Pero la asombrosa gracia y amor de Jesús es más fuerte que la vida y la muerte. Wo auch immer du bist, ruf seinen Namen an. Jesus. 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 Don't wait another day. Let's all pray together, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with each one of us now and for evermore. Amen. Amen.